because of the pervasiveness of the state, and as you described it, they operate as an operating system, it's really hard to imagine things outside of it often. And, uh, and I think that's where anarchism can really step in to help present alternatives and reimagine something that's not the state, you know. Um, but, you know, we're in some serious crises <laughs> contemporarily, <laughs> like, you, your I book's agree. very timely, like, <laughs> yeah, like, you're one of the first, uh, I mean, in the first chapter, you're like, it's about COVID, COVID-19. Right. And, uh, you know, this is interesting, because I think the state likes to present itself as like, oh, well, we didn't produce this crisis, like, this just happens, right? Um, and then instead, what they then present themselves as providing uh, solutions, but you're you're critiquing it in a different way. So I just want to ask you, like, how do you talk about COVID nineteen, the pandemic, uh, through the lens of of, of the book, um, through anarchism and the kind of the critique of the state? Like, how do you talk about this subject? Uh, through well, that lens? The, yeah, COVID. Um, <clears throat> that was interesting. I mean, I was I because I was writing this book during the pandemic, or I was really finishing it while the pandemic was raging. And I and I and I really questioned myself at certain points that you know it's so tempting to take the the the, the most recent or the, the 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 crisis that we have today and think of it as you know uh, this is the this is this is the paradigm for everything and then to wake up the next morning and say oh no I guess it wasn't but the, the elements of the mm. COVID crisis just seem to me to to uh, exemplify so much of the problem with the state that the the promise the state made to us uh, going back 500 years, and it's the same today, is that we will set up a rational system of administration that can, that can uh, direct capital, that can, um, that can uh, educate, that can provide public health, or at least coordinate it, that can do all of these things more efficiently and less violently than other systems have been able to do. Consistently, it has failed to do that. Uh, you have inequality in all these different areas. You have health care that goes to people who can afford it and, and not to people who can't. Uh, and in terms of, uh, uh, and let me back up a second, because part of my um, understanding of the state is that it's essentially an economic uh, entity. The state is something that's set up to promote rapid economic growth. And it does that because that gives it that that generates more wealth, which allows the state to reproduce itself, to deepen its control, to spread its control geographically, and so forth. Uh, and 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 that's the driving um, impetus behind the state is rapid economic growth. What does rapid economic growth means? It, it among uh, uh, it means among other things that uh, less developed or um, uh, indigenous parts of the world get bulldozed in order to shoehorn them into a capitalist mm. system that produces faster and faster and faster growth. Uh, one of the things that happens when, when that kind of thing takes place is that wild habitat is that cities and densely populated areas move closer to where you have wild habitats. So you have viruses and other um, uh, things that, uh, that are um, prevalent in the, uh, uh, in the non-settled part of the world. This suddenly start jumping onto human beings. Uh, so, and, and, and China is a good example of a country that has been absolutely uh, obsessively focused on catching up, which means faster and faster economic growth. And so you have uh, the advent of something like SARS or something like the coronavirus. Uh, so there's there, literally the state caused this problem. Uh, it caused it. Uh, the state is telling us, don't worry, we're also the solution. And the solution is vaccines, mm -hmm. it is medication, it's more economic growth on the back of that. Uh, the, 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 uh, the thing that created the problem is always the answer to the problem as well. And there's something basically wrong about that. But that, but that kind of loop, that kind of feedback loop we've got into with this uh, is something that I thought the coronavirus uh, really exemplified, uh, that, you, uh, that we may not come out of this crisis uh, in better shape physically ourselves, but we're certainly going to have a more powerful pharmaceutical industry. We're going to have a more powerful state uh, with greater uh, 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 abilities to surveil and to and and to 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 monitor us and track us. 
uh, the, the crisis once again is, is being used to strengthen the state. And that's the disturbing part. That's, that's what happens with every crisis uh, in the system is it becomes another excuse to continue to build and reproduce the state. That was the significance really to me of, uh, for, for my analysis of coronavirus. Yeah, there's. Uh, I, I was really appreciating how you were writing about it because I've been maybe a little frustrated over the past year or more since the pandemic broke out because um, I was like, I, I was taking, I've been taking the public health crisis of COVID very seriously. It's a very mm -hmm. real thing. It's not a hoax, you know, it's not right. this conspiracy. Uh, I mean, who knows? There's people that have these theories about where it really came from. I don't really care. The fact is that it exists. And there's people I know that have gotten it. There's people I've known that have died from it. Yeah. Um, I don't want to get it. I've looked into the long term health effects of it. Like I understand the science of it. And I get that. Um, and yet at the same time, I understand the concerns around the state ex exerting more influence and power because of it. And so there's, I feel like there's always this like black and white way of thinking, and maybe it's just emblematic of U.S. culture and the way that we tend to think about things here in the U.S. Um, but this idea that because it's because the state is and pharmaceutical companies are making so much money off of it, and the state is maximizing more control, it has to be some sort of deeper conspiracy, like the virus had to be man-made and it had to right, be this thing, right? right? Or that if you take it seriously, you can't critique the state and how it's t attempting to manage this crisis or maximize its control using uh, this crisis as a pretext. And I'm like reading your book and I'm like, you're taking the crisis seriously while simultaneously acknowledging how the state uses this crisis to maximize more influence, control, and so on, to expand its, sur its surveillance apparatus or um, you know other very intrusive things that the state tends to do under these conditions. So I just wanted to so just say I appreciate that because that's been one of the things that have been hitting my head against the wall about for the past 12 plus months is like, why can't people see that both things are true at the same time? So again, I, I don't know if there's a question in there. I just wanted to say like, thank you for doing so that. <laughs> it does it does prompt me to say, say this, that, you know, uh, I for, thanks for bringing it up because yeah. uh, because we're in a cultural moment where we're really being compelled to either to, 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 to see this as an either or either we simply do everything we're told or we call the whole thing a hoax and resist it and uh, let the virus spread, et cetera. And I, and I think that there, that we have to, we have to kind of get past that, that sort of false dichotomy um, that yeah. we have to see this as something that, uh, that was that was caused by the state, and that the state is 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 attempting to take charge of in a not very uh, uh, successful way. Uh, but we also have to see it as um, uh, as something that is, you know, what it seems to be a public health crisis uh, that we have to do something about. Mm -hmm. I mean, the the you know the the, the criticism of anarchism. Um, from the mainstream would be, well, if you're going to have a decentralized system uh, without, you know, uh, a, a pyramid of uh, experts to uh, address something like this, then how are you going to address it? Uh, and what I, th mm -hmm. I think I'm trying to say in that first chapter of the book is that, well, actually, uh, the this very centralized, rigid system that, that the state has developed for dealing with things like pandemics hasn't been working, that it has all kinds of problems of its own, and that actually a, 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 a more cooperative system would work better. I mean, part of the frustration that people have on the left have had with the response to coronavirus is that this would have been a perfect opportunity to uh, essentially uh, get everybody together, uh, all the experts and so forth together to, to work with, let's say, the World Health Organization to come up with uh, with a, a, a unified um, set of solutions. I mean, that's how the Human Genome Project worked. Essentially, it was a cooperative effort by scientists all over the world. Um, why was that not done this time? Well, one reason was because a lot of people thought they could make some money on it. 
And a lot of governments thought this was a way that we can we can assert tighter control over our population. Uh, there's something uh, really fundamentally wrong with the the incentives that the, that the state and that individual states have in situations like this uh, that we need to come to grips with. And that's, uh, I think, an essential part of the anarchist critique of this this whole um, effort. 